let's just introduce myself first of all. My name is Michelle Abbey and I'm the head of HR um, for Ernst & Young in Ireland. So I think the title of the presentation that's here today is kind of hints and tips on getting a graduate position, what to expect and how to make yourself stand out from the crowd and stand out from the crowd obviously in a good way. As somebody who works in human resources I get to do lots and lots of interviews so there are some very memorable ones, some for very good reasons but also some for very bad reasons as well so I'll share some of the war stories um, around some of that with you. You guys are all at the point, luckily, in your career where you're making a choice now as to where you want to work. You've thought about that, you've talked about the industry and the sector within which you, which you want to work. And for most of you who are here today, I think this seminar is very much positioned around finance type organisations and professional services type firms. And most of us take a pretty common approach and a similar approach to each other. Maybe some variances, but the process is kind of in or around the same. So I'll kind of talk you through some of the things that we do and some of the generalities around some of this as well which hopefully will be um, useful um, to you. So again it's all about kind of creating your own future and before we get into the process I suppose the one thing I would ask you to do because it'll help you as you go through any application process is really spend time thinking through why you are applying for particular roles. What is it that interests you? What is it that motivates you either about the organisation that you're looking to apply to or the job role that you're looking to apply to. So organisations will be similar in terms of the industry or the sector within which they operate but you may have a preference in terms of what part of that organisation do I want to work for or if it's the likes of professional services type firms what service lines for example do I want to specialise in. So think through that because particularly for those people who start to enter into training contracts you really need to have thought through the career choice that you make and you want to be sure that it's the right one for you along the way. So for those people kind of on the finance side and particularly professional services, what type of clients for example, example do you want to work with? What experience do you have working with that profile of client uh, to up to this point in time? So organisations like ours typically have kind of two types of clients that we work with financial services type organisations or industrial, commercial and technology type organisations. And the experience of the service lines might be similar but people's area of interest might be different in terms of do I want to work with financial type of organisations, do I want to work with funds, do I want to work with banks or actually do I want to work with the likes of the Googles and the Facebooks and those types of organisations. Then as I said again thinking through what do I want to do in terms of that. Most organisations will have consulting type opportunities, they'll have auditing, assurance type opportunities, taxation for example opportunities, but also there'll be some other things um, you know kind of uh, that are part of that as well. So don't just rule out particular type of companies because you think they only do one thing because more and more particularly in the consulting type organizations they're looking for people who have some expertise within that particular industry and sector as well as the skill set for the roles that are being done also. So you know kind of thinking through all the those types of things before you even get into an application process will help you when you come to it. So I suppose today just in terms of the agenda, some practical advice in terms of the application forms, in terms of we're now currently screening a lot of the ones we receive so I can tell you some of the things that work and don't work. Guidance on how to prepare for and to act in the interview and you know again I'll kind of skim through this because some of you may be applying to us, some may not but I'll give you a guidance because the, the dates will be the same for all the <coughs> professional services type organisations. So just moving quickly into the whole application um, piece. So in terms of the application form, what's the application form designed to do? For an employer, what it's designed to do is initially, it's to give you enough information to decide whether you went to bring that candidate to interview or not bring them to interview. So a lot of organizations, financial companies, professional services firms will have a minimum set of criteria that they'll probably have broadcast in their um, brochures or online or whatever so that might be to do with academic results for example so the application form will be designed to capture as much information on the minimum requirements that the firms have to enable them to make a decision on whether to proceed the candidate or not so for some people they may be screened out from the application form stage because they don't meet those minimum requirements so again for those people you know who are you know on track for two twos for 
versus the two ones very often they have a question you know will I be accepted in certain organization if I have a 2-2 versus a 2-1 and the answer to that will depend it'll depend on the organization with which you are applying some will um, accept and work on the basis of 2-2 um, results and that's absolutely fine but some may have a, a standard where they will only accept or proceed with 2-1 um, results you probably know this piece anyway but again so at this point for a lot of you in the penultimate type year the application form is trying to pick out what you are trending at this moment in time so it'll ask you for some of your current academic results it'll also ask you for some of your intentions like what exams you want to go on and do so for those those of you, for example, who want to go on and do the chartered accountancy type exams, the SEMA type exams, the application form will typically capture that type of information. And again, it will also capture if you want to go into a firm but be sponsored on a master's course so that you may not attend to join that firm for another um, 12 months or, or 24 months depending on the nature of the programme. So it will capture all of that information. A lot of the application forms take quite a lot of time to complete because they're looking for a lot of detail. So they could range anywhere from half an hour to an hour and a half to two hours to three hours to complete just the application form part of the process. So they are quite detailed and they are quite long in a lot of cases. So spend time gathering your information, gathering your thinking before you approach it. A lot of them allow you to start and save and then come back to it again. So they're you know intuitive enough that way but still requires a lot of time to to complete it other typical type of things they're looking for are positions of responsibility that you will have held and again what they're trying to see is you know where for example somebody has demonstrated kind of leadership type potential in previous roles so what work experience do you have previously what leadership positions or positions of responsibility have you held as part of that? Some of you, for example, may have held roles as part of clubs and societies while you're in university. Some of you may, through work experience, if you're kind of an experienced person, may have had, um, you know, financial type of responsibility or, you know, project management type responsibility or even people responsibility as part of roles that you've gone into. So those are the types of things that the application form's asking you to pick out. So it's not generality around all the things that you did for the summer. It's about picking out the key details that differentiate you from other people along the way. And so things like clubs, societies, positions of responsibility and work experience, that's absolutely the type of stuff to be putting on there as well. A lot of the um, organisations, Ernst & Young included, will have the likes of competency-based questions or we have the likes of strengths-based questions, you know, which are very much, again, based around testing your approach to how you take personal responsibility for things yourself. Teamwork, for example, um, you know, would be another one that's very commonly um, tested and there, or it might be your selling skills or whatever. So different organisations will have different competencies that they test. But again, they're kind of all designed to pick out those things that you have done that demonstrate that you have fulfilled or that you can work in that type of environment. And I would suggest something like teamwork is probably common across most organisations. So that's absolutely one to think about where you have worked in teams where you've taken personal responsibility and um, you know presentation type skills those types of things are, are the ones some tips and techniques again read the website read the brochures to spend time talking to the guys here today ask them what they're looking for what are the key things you know that'll help people succeed in those organizations and those are the things to touch on in your application form understand it because some of them are quite complex spend time reading and particularly when it's online you can kind of only do a chunk by chunk sometimes so spend time reading it what are they actually asking me for here stand back from it a little bit and then try to draft your answers and then kind of put in the final answer um, in there so again giving a broad range of your activities and your interests and again don't be afraid to put in things like the interests or the activities that you have because even sports clubs for example roles you've taken there teams that you play with that's all um, going forward to showing 
again this whole idea of the teamwork the positions of responsibility that you've held and actually you know that you're an all-rounder type of a person as well that you have a life outside of of work you know and that there are other things that you enjoy doing also so they're absolutely the right things to be putting down onto the application form as well give clear explanations of what you're saying don't give unnecessary detail avoid waffle because again we get about two and a half thousand application forms that we have to go through and that we have to screen so you can imagine Imagine the level or the attention to detail by the time we actually get through all of those it's massive so really be specific in terms of what you're trying to pull out and you know the, the screeners and all organizations will have typical type of things that they're looking for which are some of those that, that I've alluded to already so make sure that you kind of talk to those don't leave questions unanswered because most of the systems won't allow you to submit it anyway unless you've answered everything and the other big thing not mentioned here which is a no-brainer but sometimes people don't do is spell check them spend time spell checking looking at the grammar get somebody else to read it if you've enough time to do that to check does it make sense and is it specific enough that there's no waffle in there so those are kind of certainly in terms of the application form the things that i suggest that you do so make sure you meet the minimum requirements make sure that you put in specifics note all of those things like the positions responsibility previous work experience note your intention clearly around preferences with service lines with the industry groups that you want to work with with, with the type of organizations that you want to work with or any masters for example or anything that you want sponsorship to go on and do at a later stage um, so again what you're trying to do here is sell yourself be honest you know do a draft review the form check the accuracy print off a copy and submit the final copy and again bring a copy with you when you're going to the interview form or you're going to the interview because know what you put in the application form because there's nothing worse than asking somebody about something that's on the application form and they look at you blankly because they can't remember what they put on it so again read the application form you submitted prior to going to the actual um, interview process now at this stage for most of the professional services firms once they've screened out in terms of the interviews you get invited to a next stage the next stage looks different depending on the firm that you're going to so for example we run an online aptitude test and again they vary um, some organizations don't don't run anything they just run the interviews some organizations do run as I said on an assessment day where it's the same day that you do the interviews typically some form of what's called an in exercise where you're given a specific case study or task that you have to do and you're given X amount of time to work through that and you're tested as part of that again for ourselves we run an online aptitude test which runs to test your verbal and numeric reasoning and um, if you go on to if you come across either ours or somebody else's online aptitude test go on to our Facebook site and they have there's a link there to Savile and Holdsworth which is SHL and there's some example or practice aptitude tests that you can do so whether it's ours or somebody else's please feel free go on to our site and you get the SHL link and they have practice aptitude tests um, that you can can do which are a very useful um, point some firms screen out more based on the aptitude test some don't they just use it as a reference so you may get an aptitude test you may do very well you may not do so well in the aptitude test a lot of firms won't necessarily screen out because we recognize that actually it's quite challenging to do these and you know the environment is um, very different I think um, when you're trying to do an aptitude test online than if you were in a test center and different things so for us we use it just as a piece of information in the process rather than necessarily screen out on the basis of the aptitude test so interviews again most organizations all organizations will run some form of interview be that one interview or be that two interviews um, again it's mostly with the executives within the firm that run these types of interviews so it could be somebody who's a manager a senior manager director type level within the firm that you are meeting and typically from the service line that you've expressed the interest to um, on the application form so there range anything from kind of half an hour to 45 minutes to an hour from the interview and there again will range from the general type questions to specifics based competency type interview so they may test some on the application form but more again on the interview stage of the process and um, again you know some of these things are kind of common sense around kind of the preparing you know know as much about the, the position and the organization that you're applying for because the type of things that we test at interview are really about somebody's career motivation how much have they thought about or thought through why the firm 
you know, the, why the role that they want to go into and then why are they suitable for that particular role. So absolutely make sure you have your background experience done because the more you know about the firm and the industry and what's going on, and absolutely for any of you who's going in or who are going into a finance um, company now with an interview, you know there is just so much going on in the media at the moment around financial organisations and the challenges of the current economic times. Do some reading up on that. Be a bit savvy so that you can talk through and demonstrate you know, some view on some of the events that are happening out there in the financial services industry at this moment in time. Because I would be very surprised if some of the questions don't ask you for some commentary or a link to that in, in some way. Just a little bit about kind of what to, what to wear. Um, most of you are going into financial services organisations, um, dress appropriately. Um, I think it goes without saying in terms of the expectation is people come in terms of full business dress and, and some suits. Um, you know, again, for, for guys, it's probably fairly straightforward in terms of the, you know, the two-piece and the tie. For girls, it's probably a little bit more liberal, but nevertheless, you know what professional dress um, is going to look like. And you're going into professional organisations, you'll be meeting with people who themselves will be professionally attired. So just make sure, as, as I say, that you kind of dress appropriately. Um, so kind of no weird outfits um, on the day and I have seen those let me tell you as well and they are probably some of the, the memorable ones and um, so again you just should look neat professional and uncluttered wear something comfortable you know try out the new shoes the day before I mean I've seen guys who've had to change shoes ring their mammies to come with new shoes to them during the interview day because the shoes they bought the day before weren't fitting them or weren't comfortable so believe me just even little things like that make a difference because what you want you want to be sitting in that interview room exuding confidence that you are there and you are the right person for that organization and you are the right person for that particular job not going to go through much through this stuff you know about the handshake you've heard all of this piece before you know it's the first signal really to the interviewers when you walk into the room you know they liked the firm handshake not again to crank the arm off them but you know something that will give that sense that you are confident about the application that you've made and that you are right for this particular organization. Practice, absolutely, you know, you'll have friends will be in the same position. Practice with them, get them to ask you some sample questions that you, you know, predict may come up along this. And again, it's really about things like career motivation, your technical ability for the role, you know, your attention for further career development. You know, again, what do you want to get out of your own career? Where do you see yourselves in five years' time? All all those types of things you know are really um, what's going to be asked as part of that interview process um, and again you know rules around answering questions don't waffle take your time think through your answer be specific if you don't know just say you don't know don't waffle as part of that you know so don't spend time trying to think through the right answer of things so you know just make sure that you're kind of sticking with the answer to the question that you have been asked keep it brief and keep it simple and you know absolutely the people will be meeting so many graduates and so many candidates during that day it's about getting enough time to get it you know, a specific answer out that will differentiate you as to why you are the right person in terms of answering that question. Uh, again, kind of there's just some of the common sense types of things which you probably um, know already, so which I won't spend too much time on. Um, so, you know, clarify the question if you don't understand it. Try to answer as best if you can as they're passing on a question. Just say you don't know the answer and that's it. Um, things to avoid, rehearsed responses, the runaway train answers, the lack of enthusiasm. Again, show the enthusiasm, show the energy for wanting to be there. Many of you will be doing the roadshow of interviews, may have applied to a number of different con companies, but you know, show the enthusiasm for actually being there on the day and doing the interviews that you really want the roles. It can really come across and help you as part of your application. Um, you know, fidgeting, the bad body language, for example, as part of that all comes across. People don't notice they do it, and they this is again why the importance is of actually rehearsing or practicing the interviews that you do along the way. So you pick up on some of the habits that you have. Um, you've, again, you know, you just want to make sure you're putting your best foot forward on the day and your best impression. Um, so again, as I've kind of already alluded to, these are some of the things we're testing for as part of the process. So be it in the application form or be it on the interviews, your academic achievement, 
you know, decision making, intellectual type skills, interpersonal skills. So again, that will all be questioned in the application form and in the interview as part of questions on previous work experience, previous um, uh, responsibilities that you had, how you've approached projects in college, you know, how you've worked within groups previously. So practice all of the, the, the things around uh, that that you want to say. And again, as I said, motivation and commitment to desire for the job.